Cambridge, actually, there's been, uh, in the Cambridge area, uh, 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 a little bit of a reaction. The most typically funded venture of the kind that you might be thinking of is funded with angel money. So smaller scale than you might imagine, but deliberately, because you can raise 100, 500, a million pounds on, on angel, just, you know, uh, give me the money, oh, thank you very much, yeah, okay? Because it's driven more directly rather than some venture capital who is a slave of some business model of their own. Shareholdings, well, corporate investors, that can be quite useful later on. Shareholdings, again, you've got to be realistic. So, uh, for example, if your university uh, says something like 50% is the university, say goodbye, not interested. If the university is 5%, and even you don't really need much from the university, say yes, thank you very much, here is your 5%. I don't really need you, but have 5%. Okay, so just be smart. 20%, I'm generalizing, it all depends, but 20% is not a bad figure if there's been a lot of university or industry, if it's spin out from some other entity, not from a university, some substantial, substantial uh, input, and 20%. Um, CEO, marketing, uh, the deal. So the deal, you end up doing some deal, and it's very important to try and keep that deal simple. Uh, so be very careful if uh, the deal is such that there are complex shareholding structures, preference shares. Uh, be careful if uh, there are tranches. So the investors give you some money, then you have to achieve some milestone, and then the next thing. And the reason is because you then start working for the milestone to get the money, not for what the company might need, because everything changes as the company develops. Um, then you try and sell it, and then exit. And um, exit, well, uh, maybe go public, maybe have a trade sale, or maybe just continue. Uh, only one company in Cambridge, Arm, is a world dominant company. It's got the whole market for the microprocessors in mobile telephony 80%, 85%. That's got its headquarters in Cambridge. Um, comes from some of my early work. But it's the only one. So exit where you sell to an investor, or uh, sorry, a, a trade investor, you know, a big company buys you, or if you go public, at least in the old days on NASDAQ, uh, it's, it's got a tension because on the one hand, you can, um, you can uh, make money and the money will recycle because, you know, when people make money, they say, okay, well, I'll pay for my house, I'll, uh, uh, you know, I'll go and have some holidays. In Cambridge, you know, they'll buy a better bicycle uh, and they sit around for a month and then they're bored. So what do they do? They start investing and talking and all this sort of stuff. So the recycling is okay. But on the other hand, if you recycle, I mean, if you lose that company, uh, you might actually lose the long-term position. And so from a country point of view, um, it's, it's debatable. So I hope that gives you a little bit of uh, flavor of the sort of thing uh, I can talk about uh, quite a lot. So let me um, uh, move on to, and I'm very, 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 very sorry this is so busy, but I will read it out. This is just a list of my and these companies. Okay, so Camille said, talk about my company, so I'll talk about my company. So there are 12 uh, down there, and as you can not see, the first one started in 1978. Um, but uh, let me just talk about uh, the ones in red. So the one in red, I will read it out for you. It's called Virata Corporation, formerly ATM Limited. The product is DSL Semiconductor, so DSL as in broadband DSL. Um, based in Newport Beach, went public on NASDAQ in 1999. Uh, we had a secondary offering on NASDAQ, um, which raised $550 million. And then we merged with some American companies, 
because there was consolidation in that industry. So, let me tell you a little bit of the story of this one. So, along the bottom you have time. And in the middle you have what's been happening. So, let's take the first one. So, CUCL, that's Cambridge University Computer Laboratory, right? So, this is this bit of the brain over here, right? 1975, and the bottom right is 2004. So do not kid yourself that this is going to be a short-term win. Sometimes it is, but on average it's not. So the goodwill, if you like, from the university comes from early, early work in 1975. And then ORL is that industrial intermediate laboratory where some prototypes were built. And the reason the company started is as follows. The research was being paid by an industrial company called Olivetti typewriters, right? And we were doing some work for them, and they had full control, everything, intellectual pro everything, 100% salary man, Japanese style, right? And we went to the business unit, said, hey, look, I've got a better network, look, beautiful network, lovely, lovely, beautiful, faster, cheaper. And they said, Andy, Andy, fantastic, but I'm sorry, I'm so busy, I can't do it, uh, yeah, goodbye, go away, I love you, right? So the founder, so the lesson is not to then give up. So we said, I am not having this, we'll spin this out, we'll start a company. So we got our hat, we passed it round, got some investment, did a deal with Olivetti, 20%, was a particular deal and started a company called ATML, okay? Initially venture funded, the team went from the industrial lab, jump, no parachute, goodbye, and we started. And the initial product was a box, a networking box. And that didn't turn out to be successful. We sold a little bit, but we joined what uh, you might call, as a joke, the living dead, just going straight, I mean, high-tech factor of two every year, otherwise you're living dead. So we went, almost went, and all these companies, you, all, you know, there is always a time where you can't sleep because you are going to go bust next week, you haven't got the money, it's the end of the world, it's coming, and it's terrible. So we got to that position, but we changed the business of the company, we started to sell the chips that were inside the box, and the point is we had the power to do that. So we started selling the chips, okay? And this became um, uh, Virata Limited, and the chips did digital subscriber loop, DSL. And that was good timing, the late uh, 90s, okay? So the ch so design a chip, difficult chip, have the chip made, sell the chip to customer, go to factory, have your chip made for $10, sell to customer $20, Happiness. Very high tech chip, difficult to do, problem, problem, but ten dollars worth happiness. So we go, surprise, it's selling, shock horror. So we start running and we did very well. So we, we started consolidating, bother buying other companies. And this company is now uh, 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 pretending to be American because the market's big and sounds better and that's where the dollars are. And so we went public with this one on NASDAQ. Jolly good. Um, and then, as I said, we went on to a second stage where there was consult uh, 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 acquisitions, and we managed to raise a lot of money, $550 million, uh, $530 million, to try and grab the world uh, market. And then finally, we merged. We merged with another company, called Globespan uh, and became Globespan Virata. And by this time, the company had, uh, I can't remember what I know, revenues of 500, 600 million dollars, 